fading this out then? Oh, I think I forgot to ask you. Good afternoon. The last 24 hours on South Australian roads have been absolutely tragic. At about 4.45pm yesterday at Trickpoint Hill Road at, at um, Angerston, a utility rolled and subsequently hit a tree. As a result of that collision, a 41-year-old male sadly lost his life from Parafield Gardens and a 35-year-old male from uh, Elizabeth South also lost his life. Today at about 6.10am, the uh, Major Crash Investigation Section have gone to a serious crash at Meningi. At this point in time, it looks like a utility has left the road at extremely high speed and has collided with a shed. That The occupant of that vehicle has got life-threatening injuries and is currently being flown to the Royal Adelaide Hospital. At about 8.06pm last night, a pedestrian, a male pedestrian, was hit by a car at Port Perry West. That male was also airlifted to the Royal Adelaide Hospital and that male is also currently fighting for his life with life-threatening injuries. At about 5.30pm yesterday, a stolen vehicle drove through the Yamba water checkpoint, subsequently travelled down the Sturt Highway without stopping. Police used a number of uh, tactics to stop the vehicle and unfortunately at about 7pm that vehicle went onto the wrong side of the road near Gawler on the Northern Expressway and collided with an innocent motor vehicle. The occupant of that vehicle, a 26 year old male, was subsequently flown to hospital with non-life threatening injuries. I can't reinforce enough that every one of these incidents that's occurred within the last 24 hours on our road is totally preventable. People have deliberately made bad decisions that have had tragic outcomes. I ask you to think about who you're going to leave behind if you make irresponsible decisions on our roads. We're coming up to the festive season. Nobody wants to look around the dinner table and have their loved ones not seated with them. So please, take some responsibility. The carnage that we've seen in the last 24 hours is preventable and we all need to take responsibility for it to make sure that we all remain safe on our roads. Just quickly about the anecdotes about the Yamba, about the man who ran out. So when he crashed, he was on the wrong side of the Northern Expressway? That's correct. And do you know why, uh, you know, if he wanted in Victoria, do you know what he, why he wanted in the Plum Jeep side of the road? No, I don't have that level of detail, but I can tell you that he's currently in custody and he's been charged with a range of serious offences, including uh, disobeying an emergency management direction. Can you tell us a little bit about, obviously, he was monitored from Yando, he's got all the way to Gawler. It's quite a journey, a couple of hours, a couple hundred kilometres. I mean, talk to us about the difficulties in terms of stopping him, perhaps on the Sturt Highway at high speed, why he perhaps wasn't detained earlier. There are a number of attempts to stop him. I'm not going to go into detail about what we do operationally. And um, we also monitored him from above with the police helicopter as well. And um, unfortunately, we weren't able to stop him prior to the collision occurring. Does he have connections in South Australia? I don't have that level of detail, sorry. Uh, Superintendent, there have been 16 fatal crashes in the Barossa this year, which is up 128% from this time last year. Is there any rhyme or reason for that figure being so high, or is it kind of just, I guess, luck of the draw? It's the result of people primarily making poor decisions. It's as simple as that. Um, you, people have to take responsibility. If we lost the number of lives that we lose on our roads every year in another way in South Australia, there'd be uproar. But we seem to just accept that we're going to lose a high number of people on our roads. And the frustration is that people don't need to be seriously injured or killed on our roads. They simply need to make good decisions. Cars don't kill people, people kill people. We need to understand that. And I guess police recently launched a road safety campaign targeted at rural drivers in rural areas, I guess, you know, seeing a double fatal in a rural area, how does that make you feel after launching such a strong campaign? It's, it, it disappoints me because clearly 70% of lives lost in South Australia are lost in regional South Australia. And we've run a significant media campaign to make people aware of that. 
And if we look at the four incidents that we're talking about today, they all occurred in regional South Australia. Just given that uh, Doug played all in Angiston, I mean, do we know, do the police know what the relationship between those two men were? Were they part of the same family group? I'm not aware of that. I understand they were work colleagues. Do you know why they were, uh, you know, there at that time? Were they on their way somewhere in that? I, I don't have that level of detail. As I said, I understand that they're work colleagues. Um, Angiston locals seem to be under the impression that Trig Point Hill Road doesn't have a speed limit because there's no sign there. Is um, that true? Look, <clears throat> every road would have a posted speed limit. I'm not aware of what the Trig Point Hill Road at Angiston, that speed limit is, but it would certainly be posted and there would be a speed limit on that road. I would suspect the speed limit would be 100 kilometres an hour. It's early in the investigation, but was speed a factor, do you know? It certainly looks like it was a factor in the early stages of the investigation, yes. And were they wearing seatbelts as well? My understanding is they were. In terms of the um, Yamba incident, um, were, well, are you asking for dash cam footage, is that right? Anybody that can contribute to the investigation of that incident from when the stolen vehicle crossed the border, whether it's by way of dash cam, whether it's relevant observations or anything else that you can contribute, I'd ask that you come forward to police and assist us in our investigation. In regards to the double facial, if you're investigating um, whether speed was a factor, um, considering it was, you know, people who might think they're on the road on their own, that they can exceed the speed limit safely, what's your message to people in regards to that? Did you, uh, am I be okay if there's no other cars around? There's a posted speed limit on a road for a reason. You can't exceed any posted speed limit safely. That's my message to anybody that's thinking about doing that. And the reality is just because a speed limit is posted on a road, doesn't compel you to drive to that speed. If it's not safe to do so for a range of reasons, then don't drive to that speed. You don't have to drive at the nominated speed. You can drive slower if you need to. And just in relation to that Yamba uh, incident as well. So was he following the whole, was the car followed the whole way from the checkpoint to where it finished up by Polo? It was followed a significant distance by Polo, yes. Was, was he, was he uh, out of vision at any point? Did police lose sight of him at any point during that? I don't, I don't have that level of detail. I don't believe so. I believe the vehicle was followed from the border to the collision near Gawler. You mentioned some tactics. What were some of the other tactics police used? Well, there's a number of things that we do to try and um, resolve those type of incidents without the public being hurt, but I'm not going to go into those. So, certainly, we try to resolve it prior to the collision. Is the Mavinti crash, is, um, is speed something that you're also looking at at that one? Do you know? Yeah, look, it's in the early stages of the investigation, but uh, on face value, it looks like speed was a significant factor. Do you know uh, that driver's age, where he's from? Is he a Meningi local? My, I don't know his age. My understanding is he's not a Meningi local. He's from Metropolitan Adelaide. Can I just check the innocent driver was airlifted to which hospital? I believe it was the Royal Adelaide. Uh, and do you know what the Meningi, why he would have been speeding? Was he being chased by police or anything like that? No, police had nothing to do with it. He just made a bad decision. And no idea why he was in that area? No, no, I haven't got that level of detail at this stage, but we'll certainly look at that. And that shared that he owned who was a part of someone's property? And it was saying? somebody's property on the Princess Highway in Ingi, yes. Were they at home at the time? Or? Uh, I believe it was a business premises. So just back to the Amber crash, you said you tried to stop them a number of times. Um, you won't go into exactly what that was, but how many, how many is a number of times are we looking at here? Half a dozen? I don't have specific numbers, but I know that there was a number of opportunities and, and we attempted on many occasions to try and stop that vehicle before the collision occurred. Was that car stolen from interstate? My understanding is it was a stolen vehicle from interstate, but it certainly was a stolen vehicle. Can you elaborate on what happened at the border checkpoint? Was he meant to pull up with officers standing there and he drove straight through or how did it kind of unfold? Look, my understanding is that he simply disobeyed the direction to stop and drive through the checkpoint. Can you ask me about the Birkenhead um, incident that happened sort of a few weeks ago now? The man is appearing in court or is appearing in court today. Can you comment on any of that? On Sunday the 17th of October at about 5.30pm there was a collision between two vehicles on Semaphore Road and Fletcher Road. Tragically an 80 year old woman succumbed to her injuries a short time after the collision uh, and lost her life. A young a relative in the back was treated at Women's and Children's with minor injuries. A 32 year old Woodville Westman was uh, also conveyed to hospital and treated for his injuries and a female passenger was uninjured as a result of the investigation into that collision. That 32-year-old male was arrested yesterday 
He was refused bail, remanded in custody, and he's been charged with a significant amount of very, very serious offences as a result of that collision. I just want to double check with that too. Um, I noticed when I was reading the release this morning, it said that the passenger was also a 32-year-old Woodville West man. Was that the mistake? Has that been corrected? Or My understanding was that the, the driver who we arrested is a 32-year-old Woodville West man and that his passenger was a, a female. Is he known to police? Um, can't say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.